Hello friends. Today we're going to be doing a video I personally have never done and I've put off doing for my whole booktube career because I think I might get angry. <laughs> I was angry. I was angry. We're going to be reacting to one star reviews of my favourite books. I've never done this before. I've never even looked at one star reviews of my favourite books because I'm not sure I can take it. I feel very attacked. <laughs> When I hear people saying bad things about my favourite books, it's hard. I can deal with like a three star or even a two star of my favourite books. I can deal with that, right? I'm not a monster. <laughs> but one star, one star is, is drawing the line, is drawing the line. So we're going to be reading some of them and reacting to them today. But before we get into it, I want to inject some positivity <laughs> into the room, get some positivity in the room uh, and thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Book of the Month. Now don't skip ahead, don't skip past the sponsorship because I want to tell you about how this month's selections are so me coded. They're just so me slay. Honestly, it's like they thought of what would Megan like, honestly. <laughs> no, it's true. Oh, it's true. So Book of the Month, if you don't know, is a super popular and fast growing online book service for readers. Their mission is to promote new and emerging authors. Their team scours through all the new releases that are coming and they pick some of the most exciting ones every month and you get to pick your Book of the Month. So every month they have between five and seven books for you to pick from and you can pick one as your book. And let me just show you quickly. <laughs> the books that I got this month. The first book that I picked was Love on the Brain by Ali Hayes. Oh, what? Yes! <laughs> Love Hypothesis is my favourite romance I've ever read. The only romance I've ever given five stars and that is thanks to Book of the Month because I got Love Hypothesis in Book of the Month. I saw it as one of their picks and I thought, you know what? I'll trust them. I'll trust them and let it be known. The trust was well placed. It's a very similar idea, romance between scientists. And then this one, you're not going to believe it. It's like they looked at my channel and thought, hmm, hmm. What would she like? The next book is Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayborn. This is very similar to Thursday Murder Club, which is one of my favorite books. In fact, we're gonna be talking about that later in the video. It's about these older women who have spent their lives as the deadliest assassins in a clandestine international organization, but now they're 60 years old. Four female friends can't just retire. It's kill or be killed. I love it. It's also reminding me a lot of the Lady Hardcastle mysteries where Lady Hardcastle and her maid Flo were spies for many years and now they've kind of retired. So it's like Thursday Murder Club meets Lady Hardcastle. It's like my dream. It's like they reached into the recesses of my brain and plucked out the book that would be perfect for me. So I am so happy with my two picks that I got this month. And you know, I do a lot of book research, obviously into new releases and stuff just because of the nature of having my channel. But even for me, they sometimes find new releases that sound so incredible, are totally up my street and I'd never heard of them before. Kill of a Certain Age, a few of you have started mentioning to me in the past week or so, but I hadn't heard about it before that. And it's like, how? <laughs> How? So I really think they are such a great way for you guys to find new and exciting new releases without having to put in that legwork yourself. So they have the best price for new release hardcover fiction. If you want to get your first book for only $9.99, which is crazy, use the code MEGWITHBOOKS. Check out my link down below. I honestly, listen, if you're in the US and book the month shipped to you, go for it. Like 100%. Give them a go for a month or two and see what you like it. It's risk free. You can skip months if none of the books interest you. So I would really recommend going and giving it a go. Okay, happiness over. It's time to get emotionally attacked. <laughs> I'm gonna screen record it. When I've seen some people do it before, they like go and get the screenshots of reviews beforehand. I didn't wanna see anything. I didn't wanna see a single thing. So the first book that we're gonna be looking up one star reviews for is Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter, which many of you know is my favorite series of all time. A lot of you are reading it right now, which makes me so happy. Like it's, you know, it's a really autumnal book. If you're looking for an autumnal recommendation, this is what I'd recommend to you. And a lot of you are reading it now and tagging me and stuff on Instagram. And like, you may take a picture of the page and I like zoom in and I read it and I get goosebumps. Like that's how much this series means to me and like the cadence and the tone of what, like. <sighs> One star. It's a very small amount, so. The narration was done by all the characters in the book. However, it was done by Mary De Jekyll. She is reading their story to Lena Hyde and I guess us the reader. When Mary is actually reading the story, it's not too bad. You're getting it wrong, girl. Catherine's writing the story. God. Reading comprehension. <laughs> When Mary's actually reading the story, it's not too bad, but then she will stop telling the story to talk to others around her. By doing this, she's actually giving us spoilers to what is going on, going to happen in the book. This happens all throughout the book. It is so aggravating. No, it's giving us like teasers. It's giving us little excitements of what's gonna happen in the book. Diana will say that. Remember when I did this and then Mary will be like, we haven't got there yet. Like that excites me. That's breaking down the usual construct. I'm making the chair squeak. Usual construct of what a book should be. 
It's tearing down the 3X struck. No, I'm joking. <laughs> be careful of your tongue. I don't yeah, need to be careful, be careful of my tongue. Be careful of your tongue. I, I'm, I, I don't think I can do this. All of the excessive and unnecessary, I can't read, unnecessary side commentary feels like page filler and I don't give any shits about how Mary, Diane, it's Diana, Beatrice, Justine, Watson or Holmes or anyone else on Sony's story feels about how the story is written told. I can see you're getting angry. Angry? No, I'm not angry. I'm livid. These are the best characters known to man. These are... Mary, that's quite clever of you actually, making them want to read the second book. Nothing in the world could make me read the second book. The best thing about this book is that I've finished reading it and never have to read it again. It shelved as worst books read. Oh, I, do you guys have taste? Like, Listen, some of you just don't understand. Some of you just don't get it. The girls that get it, get it, and the girls that don't, don't. DNF because the characters interjecting random comments into the narrative every other page drove me absolutely nuts. Shelby gets it. Shelby's a hot girl. Shelby says, hilarious, because I'm in the middle of this book and that's one of my favorite things about it. Tell them. Not dissing Theodora Goss, queen of literature. Theodora Goss has a PhD in English. Let that sink in for a second. I can't believe this was so bad when she's supposed to be an expert. That takes it too far. That's sickening. Don't attack my queen, Theodora Goss. Don't attack my Queen Theodora Goss. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I can't stand for it. I can't... I don't think I'm very good at this video, guys, because I'm just getting angry. <laughs> okay, this person says this reads like fan fiction. This book does none of the work to make us like these characters or really use them. It just takes them and uses them outside the context that made the characters great in the first place. How wrong do you have to be? How... <laughs> I don't know of a lot of these characters, right? So sure, I know of Sherlock and Watson right? They, they play a minimal part in the story. But the girls, like, I'd never read Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. M Moreau, Dr. Moreau, never read that. Uh, Rappuccini's Daughter, I think it's called. Like, what the fuck? Like, that's like a short story from Victorian Gothic literature. Of course, I had, like, prior conceptual knowledge, but I'd never read the stuff that these girls were from. How could you be so wrong when this builds up the greatest found family trope to ever exist? <laughs> Okay, I feel like we've done enough of Strange Case, The Alchemist's Daughter. I don't think I can take much more of that. I gen I genuinely don't. I ge that is the worst. <laughs> Next, we're gonna look up reviews for The Starless Sea, one of my favorite fantasy books I've ever read. I feel like the criticism of this is gonna be there's no plot. It's basically gonna be the main criticism. And you know what, that's right. But like, that's not a reason to rate it one star. I did not enjoy this at all. Pretentious, confusing, and jumping through time to make no sense whatsoever. I feel like I've wasted a reading week. Now, what is this book about? Honestly, your guess was as good as mine. Yeah, it's a concept, it's a vibe, it's a moment in time. It's a moment. She did, she, it's a moment. Make a memory, you know what I mean? She's an icon, she's a legend, and she is the moment. Now, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Gather a library of your favorite books of literature about the joy of reading, about fantasy, with imaginative creativity. Cut out the pages from all of them, then scatter the pages, <laughs> throwing them into the air. Then at random, pick up a page and cut it into individual paragraphs. Cut out sentences that are gorgeous or scissor out the descriptions that make your heart sing when you read them. Then basically put them together in a 600 page scrapbook. There, you have made a handmade book of beautiful description sentences. Yeah, I just like, but why is that bad? <laughs> I recognize this about the style of sea like it's all over the place right but i feel like so often in reading we have this like demand that the books that we read lay everything out on a platter for us i feel like that's why a lot of people hate catherine house as well god knows i'm not going to read one star of that i actually could not take that we want the plot the meaning to be like spelled out for us, right? And what I like about Erin Morganson is that she doesn't do that. I feel like in a lot of books, we want to know what was going on in the author's head when they wrote it. Like, what does this part mean? What does this part mean? And I'm happy knowing with Erin Morganson, I will never know what that part meant. You know what I mean? I'm just like, I'm fine with that. Okay, next, I'm not going to get it out because it's in a stack. <laughs> Bane of my life putting it in a stack because I always have to get it out. Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. What do I think one stars of this are gonna say? Uh, the, it's not funny, it's trying to be funny, it's not, it's poorly written. Um, because this is the opposite to The Star of the Sea, right? It shows my duality as a reader, right? It shows my versatility. <laughs> the Star of the Sea is beautiful prose, lots of descriptions. The Thursday Murder Club has almost no description. Richard Osman said description, you don't need that. Unpopular opinion, this is a long review again, guys. Why are we writing such long reviews? <laughs> 
I thought this book was kind of terrible. The narrative jumps about so much it's difficult to remember anyone's name, much less become invested in anyone's individual story. I've seen a lot of people saying that actually the murder plot is totally secondary to all the intricacies and relationships between the characters in the retirement village, but not enough time is actually spent on exploring any of these relationships. Disagree. <laughs> it's disgusting to me. I do love my murder mysteries sometimes to have, you know, a personal element as well as the mystery. When you think of like Erky Poro, for example, you love Erky Poro, you learn about him as the series goes on, um, as you read more books, but in Agatha Christie, you don't really like spend a lot of time getting to know the characters. You only spend time getting to know them for how it's gonna so serve solving the mystery. Whereas that's not the case in this. You get to know Joyce, Ron, like you get to know little, little quips about them that I think keeps you reading the series because you, you're constantly learning like little bits more about their personality. Yes, they are like, not, not surface level. I can see how, you would, how people would think that. They're like archetypal characters in a way, but I love that in all of my murder mysteries because it's kind of like a trope, I feel like, of murder mysteries that like Ron is like the gruffy sender, like Joyce is like the motherly kind one, but then they constantly kind of like throughout the series subvert that and subvert your idea of them. So I like that aspect of it. Okay, here we go. What an absolute load of twaddle. <laughs> Once again, I was taken in by the glowing reviews, but the tr truth is total opposite. Quite simply, it's boring. Do not bother. I don't know how you could call this masterpiece boring, honestly. Okay, this person gave it a 0 0.2. Hell. You have shown an incredible lack of respect. Not even a 1, a 0 0.2. How can you even give a book a 0 0.2? Like, I, I don't understand. I hate humorous novels. Well then, I hate crime novels. Well then, why did you pick this up? I did not care unless I was disinterested and ultimately disappointed. Well, I think that's due to the fact that it's a funny book that's a crime novel. I mean, we were set up to fail. <laughs> Next, we're gonna read the reviews of Heartstopper, volume one, which I challenge someone to give a one star review. This reads like all the Tumblr blogs in existence pulled their worst qualities, but somehow the resulting goo turns out even soppier. Ah! <laughs> there is literally no conflict. They try gay boy fools for straight guy, but from aforementioned blushing, there's not even an issue. I thought there could be at least some comment or conflict about homophobia, but zilch. Okay. I mean, listen, part of the beauty of Heartstopper for me is that it's about joy and love, right? There is space for both. <laughs> it's important that we still have media that shows the uh, more difficult side of being gay or being bi or you know, being LGBTQ. It's important we have that media. It's important that we have, you know, adult media that shows the difficulties. But it's also important we have joy. Like, especially for kids, right? This is for kids. This is for young people. And it's, I think it's so important that this book doesn't need to have really a conflict and can just be soppy, right? Let us have soppy. I just had a look, that's basically all the, the critiques are, is that it's too nice and soppy and sweet. Um, so you're wrong. <laughs> Okay, and then lastly, we're gonna look up A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, which, if you haven't heard the news, it's been made into a TV show! I'm so excited. I'm, I genuinely can't tell you how excited I am. So yeah, it's gonna be BBC Three, starts filming next year. I just love my life. I love my family, I love my job, I love my life. Um, <laughs> so I thought we could celebrate it by reading people's bad reviews. <laughs> This book had it all. Bad writing, a completely unrealistic plot, white saviour trope, I'm not like other girls, I'm probably the most annoying character I have ever read. Listen, part of the joy of Pip is that she is annoying, right? I was kind of Pip in secondary school. I was like very academic, high achiever, like wanted to be the best. And I think the journey that she goes on with her, you know, pressure on herself throughout the book is very interesting. Now I have heard a few people give the white saviour criticism of the book and I think that is a valid criticism. I don't think the second and third book have a problem with that. I think it was something Holly Jackson addressed. For some reason this teenager is allowed to start a massive murder investigation where every possible witness tells her everything without having to work for it and of course she ends up doing what the police couldn't. Now listen, never underestimate a bit of teenage girl's skill for research and her ingenuity. I'm gonna say it now. <laughs> Never underestimate the scene. It's not unrealistic to me that she could figure something out when 
uh, the police couldn't because police are shit. <laughs> in our legal and criminal system, if they're in like in this case, there's a perceived confession to a murder, they're just like, well, job done. When they're like, oh, she interviews all the witnesses and they tell her everything. It's a small town. Like it's a small town. What do you expect? Like people know each other. People are gonna talk. A lot of the people she talks to, she's known for years. So like, incorrect. <laughs> Oh my god, I made a Goodreads account just so I could give this book one star. Why? <laughs> Guys, all of the reviews for this are harsh. I'm very concerned for this author. It appears they have never once met a real human being in their life. What is going on up here in this day? <laughs> it was so bad I wanted it to give it a zero, but that's not possible, so I give it a one. Oh my god, are you Tyra? It, it was so bad, bad I wanted, wanted to give you a zero, zero but that's, that's not possible. possible. So, so I, I give, give you a one. <laughs> On that note, we're ending this. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. I don't know how this is gonna go. I need to go edit this now and I'm like, what was that? I feel a bit riled up. I feel like I need to go for a run or something. <laughs> Let me know what you thought of any of these books. These are obviously some of my favourite books, but let me know um, what you thought of any of these and any unpopular opinions, any books you rated one star that everyone else seems to love. I would love to know. That's interesting to me because um, that has happened to me a few times. So I'd love to know books that you didn't like that you feel like are an unpopular opinion. If you got into the end of the video, comment the blue heart emoji for book of the month because I'm just like, I genuinely feel like I've won the lottery. My picks this month, I can't get over it. I want to read both of these in October, November. I don't know if I'll be lucky enough to, but I would love to. Um, so yeah, comment the blue heart emoji down below if you got into the end. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you very soon in another video. Bye!